yes ma'am so you can start okay good uh yeah hello everyone okay hello can i please have everyone on hello. camera yeah can everyone please on your camera please this is not an online class Okay. All right. Thank you. Firstly, I welcome you all to the very first meeting of this term. Hello, everyone. And before we begin, I'd like to give a huge shout out to the Forty Six Com for doing such an incredible job in the previous term and keeping those spirits just as high. I'm hoping that the Fifty Six Com will also do a great job. I mean, I know for a fact we'll do a great job as well. So, as we go ahead with the meeting, as I heard the theme, which is sport, I think my brain instantly went to the T20 World Cup final. What a match, right? <laughs> yeah, and we won, of course. So, uh, of course, Atiya Modi has more to say about what key things of sport, but what makes sports very interesting has to be the rules. Right, rules is what makes a sport very interesting and very entertaining. And just like every sport has its own set of rules, I think we in Toastmasters also follow a set of rules, which we call the golden rule. But as we are in an online meeting, I think the main two rules that we are going to follow for the day has to be that one, keep your noise making devices on silent. Please take a second to do that. Okay, I hope you did that. And the next rule has to be that please make sure that you stay on mute when a speaker is speaking, as it might background noises might distract the speaker. I think that's all from my end. And as we go ahead with the meeting, I'd like to call uh, the presiding officer of the day, Toastmaster Sanadia. Congratulations one again, once again, and the stage is all yours, hypothetically. Thank you, Toastmaster Mansi. A quick AV check. Am I both audible and visible? Yep, that's great. So first of all, I welcome you to meeting 251, the first meeting of this term. And let me officially open the meeting. I declare meeting number 251, theme sports open. I don't have a gavel, so yeah. So first of all, I congratulate the 14th Executive Committee for giving the best they did. And uh, I also give my wishes to the 15th Executive Committee who are starting their term now, which is the first meeting. And we do have a lot planned for you guys so that we can uh, enhance your experience of the club. Uh, coming to a few announcements for today, uh, all members are required to attend the installation ceremony for the 15th XCOM, which is scheduled for 10th of July. Uh, the new XCOM will be installed by our area director, Toastmaster Janani, and it will be great if you all can come and witness that. Our immediate passing president, Toastmaster Nikhilesh, and the passing secretary, Toastmaster Aryan, will be giving you reports of what happened in the previous term and me, myself, and the current secretary, Toastmaster Nikhil, will be presenting reports on what we plan for the next term. So it will be a great experience and a great thing to witness for you all. So please do attend it. Next up, the forms for the varsity jackets were out. And today will be the last day to fill the forms. So if you haven't filled them yet, please do so. Today night 12 is the last where the forms will be closed. So do grab your jackets so that we can flaunt them through the entire campus and wherever we go for meetings outside the college as well. Uh, so that's up with the announcements. I don't see any guests here. So yeah, none. OK, so we can continue. Daksh is raising his hand. Is there anything you want to say, Daksh? Okay, whatever. Now coming to today's theme, I think 
the craziest sports person i know is our tmod that is toastmaster abiram who is just into sports and he breathes and exhales and everything he does is sports so now everyone is very well related to sports and it is something we all relate to so let's see what our tmod has for us and i'll just hand it over to him over to the toastmaster of the day toastmaster shashank, uh, shashank abiram uh thank you toastmaster sanidhya am i both audible and visible everyone okay firstly i would like to apologize for this weird angle you may not it may not seem like i have direct eye contact with the audience because unfortunately my laptop doesn't have a webcam so i have to use Is my mobile no no it's an asus rog strix because legion has their camera on the down side okay no no my laptop doesn't have a webcam at all so i'm using my phone's camera okay so greetings toastmasters as a now sanidhya already has given you a, a small introduction about myself how i love sports and everything about that and i don't think it's only me but everyone in fact everyone around is in some or the other way connected to sports so this is a topic we can all relate to in our lives as uh, as our uh, sa already said be the t20 world cup the euro 2024 or the ongoing wimbledon championship we all follow some or the other team or an individual and support them with all our hearts so now i would like to invite some of the members to share some of their experience of their first sport journey or anything related to sports Hey, my first sports memory is. Ah, to us, Master Shivan, she was saying. Yeah, uh, I was saying that the first vivid sports memory I have is the 2011 World Cup. Dhoni just hitting that six, and pretty much everyone celebrating. Apart from that, one I hold really close to my heart is. watching jorud bat for the first time it was his debut game and sometimes you just grow with a player i've seen his whole career so i feel like i grew up with him in a way that's great anyone else um it's not a particular memory at all but uh, when you're watching a sport it's like you forget everything else so it's like a okay. take away from all your stress busters right so just like that i actually forgot to do something and i apologize for that so another one rule as a that we follow in host masters has to be that even though it promotes you to speak about topics that you like we time have to keep a check on topics such as sex religion and everything and i'm really sorry i did not say this rule at the beginning and i'm sorry to take your time okay uh host master pranav you were saying Well, being a being a person who has been following Formula One since the Indian Grand Prix 2011, and seeing Lewis Hamilton win one or the other race, it's kind of sad that he hasn't won anything in 2024 till date, or since 2021 for that matter. But then, last week, we we saw finally George Russell at his Mercedes pick up a win, and Max Verstappen finally get the throne. And we not hearing the Dutch anthem. Oh my God, how long has it been? All your film fans out there. I agree. And, uh, I agree. Can we say that one small haven for Charles, please? Okay. So, thank you for your participation. Uh, moving on. Uh, let me tell you a small story about myself. Uh, when I was around ten, I used to accompany my father for a game of tennis every day. like we used to go to a sports complex every day to play and i used to love tennis but when i accompany him and it's all the senior citizens or uncles everyone they're playing and i had to wait so i go with high expectations that i'll learn something new i'll learn the game i'll become a better player but i end up as a ball boy but instead of waiting for my turn and being the non quitter that i am 
there are other courts as well in the sports complex like badminton court tt court etc so wherever i find a free spot i just hop in there and that's how i managed to pick up three other racket sports so from all this i'm sure we can all agree that yeah. sports is an integral part of us and everyone can relate to sports in some form or the other even if they don't actually play now just like every sport has a humble beginning but grows on to catch the imagination of millions of fans toastmasters a non profitable organization founded by ralph c smedley on the 22nd october 1924 now boasts a huge membership of 280000 spread over 144 different countries with more than 14700 clubs so one of for toastmasters coming back to the theme as toastmaster sanjay already said i am someone who who inhales and exhales sports like everything for me i i just love sports i cannot express it in words so it's just something that defines me different games and their own different unique techniques they fascinate me each game may be different in its own way but there is a common point which every sport teaches us that is the mentality sports gives us mental strength positive attitude teaches us the essence of hard work and so many other things so moving on just like a game requires practice impromptu decision making and learning from our mistakes our meeting will have the first segment as a prepared speeches followed by a section of table topics and lastly the evaluation segment now let us call the head coach of the meeting the general evaluator who will assess all the players in the meeting today toastmaster harsha and her intro goes like she thinks laughter is the best workout and coffee is the best fuel so toastmaster harsha good evening everyone and i am toastmaster harsha your general evaluator for today and today i am going to be evaluating everything that happens in this meeting and everything that doesn't happen in this meeting as well be it your prepared speeches the evaluations the table topics everything that goes on in this meeting today but carrying this doing this whole thing is a mammoth task for me and to help me out i have my super cool tag team and yeah so first off i would like to introduce the timer for today he's none other than toastmaster brahma ganesh and his intro goes like this he says time and tide waits for none neither does the timer over to you toastmaster brahma ganesh quick audio video check am i visible and audible okay so good evening everyone it's been a very very long time since i've been a meeting uh, and glad to be back well as for the role of timer to introduce this role someone said time can be your greatest enemy but your most strategic ally so use it against all odds and use it at will so even if you as the introduction says time and tide wait for none so it just suggests that whenever you're speaking whatever you're speaking in this meeting be it a prepared speech segment or even a table topic role it will be timed and i will be the timer who will note down the time and the timing goes as follows for a prepared speech the time limit is from 5 to 7 minutes and uh, for table topic uh, speeches the time limit is from uh, Three minutes. That is two and two to two and a half minutes, and a buffer of thirty seconds for each. Well, that should be all from my side, and uh, back to the general evaluation. Thank you, Toastmaster Brahma Ganesh. Next up, we have the our counter for today. It is Toastmaster Sri Lalita, and her intro goes like this. a person who stays active by running around in circles jumping into conclusions and climbing down overthinking spirals yeah that's our account of you guys over to you shri lalita 
Um, hey guys, quick audio and video check. Am I audible and visible to everyone? Okay. Uh, so, um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Sri Lalita. Um, I'll be the uh, counter for today. Now, let's do that again. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sri Lalita, and I'll be the R counter for today. See how much better that sounds. My job as the R counter is to draw your attention as speakers or evaluators or even the table topic speakers to the crutches and the filler words and the pauses that you guys use so that your uh, speaking can sound way more confident. So the crutch words can be things like uh, 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 um, so, er, uh, etc. Your pauses are basically when you're talking and you just those and uh, you have repetitions. So like, so like when you're talking, when you're talking, those are your repetitions and filler words are basically any words that you use when you sort of forget what to say next. So it could be something like so or and or like, etc. And I will be delivering my report when called upon by the general evaluator. Over to the general evaluator. Thank you, Sri Lalita. Last but not the least, we have the grammarian for today, Toastmaster Tapan, and he has a very cute intro. He says he is going to empire the vocabulary part for today, so he will be the vocabulary empire. Over to you. Hello, everyone. So, am I audible? Am I audible? Is my voice clear? Okay, no problem, even if I am not visible. Thank you. So, hello, fellow Toastmasters and guests. A very good evening to one and all. Today, I will be acting as a gra grammarian for this meeting. Today's meeting is about sports. We all follow diff different kinds of sports, right? Either we watch them or play them. Some of them are single player or else like tennis and ba badminton. Most of the games we play are with big teams like Kabaddi, football and all. Where either it is with single, uh, either it is with single player or with teams. At the end, sports is all about players who are playing to win the game, right? So, apart from players, there is also one more important person in the ground. Can anyone guess who is? It is empire, right? So, as general evaluator said, I will be empiring your usage of words. As a gra grammarian, it is my responsibility to play a close attention to the language uses of each and every speaker, each individual speaker. I will take a note of all any misuses in the, in, in the language and also any quotes, sayings or good vocabulary. At the end of the meeting, I will be I will present you them with my report. Apart from this, I also have one, one, more, one more duty as a gra gra grammarian. It is to introduce you the word of the day and idiom of the day. Word of the day is deuce. Anyone who, who is watching tennis here are no, known for this word. It is winning two games continuously. In gen general terms, you can say winning two continuously. And idiom of the day is to hit someone be below the belt. To hit someone below the belt means to say something which is an unfair, which is done with the intention to hurt someone. I encourage each and every speaker to use the word of the day and the idiom of the day in their speeches. And at the end of the meeting, I will be back with my report. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Tappan. Yes, so that's it from my end and back to the table. Thank you, Toastmaster Harsha. Okay, continuing. In sport, practice and preparation is the foundation for a successful performance as it gives one confidence to give out their best. Similarly, delivering a prepared speech ensures coverage and addressing the desired topic with adequacy. Therefore, let's begin with today's prepared speeches segment. I would like to call upon 
the speech evaluator one, Toastmaster Sharanya, to give the speech objectives. And her intro goes like this. She's not a very sporty person, but likes to run and used to be in her house's track team in school. So over to you, Toastmaster Sharanya. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the day. So I'm going to be evaluating Toastmaster Shivansh, who is going to be giving his L3P2 in the Pathway Innovative Planning. And this is an elective project that he's going to be giving. So the project that he has chosen, the purpose of that is to write and deliver a speech that inspires others. And the purpose of the speech is the same as the project, that is to inspire others. So Toastmaster Shivansh is going to inspire us today. The timer, uh, note that the speech is from five to seven minutes. Good luck, Toastmaster Shivansh. I'm looking forward to your speech. Back to the TMOD. Thank you, Toastmaster Sharanya. So I would like to call upon Toastmaster Shivansh and his speech title goes like this. Let's get it done. So Toastmaster Shivansh, let's, uh, let's get it done. Let's get it done, Toastmaster Shivansh wanted to check if I'm both audible and visible. All right. So first of all, let's start with the formalities. Good evening, everyone. Now just imagine you are playing a cricket match and your team has been absolutely battered by the opposition. You are some nine down. And you are the next man to go in. But right before the game, you have got the news that your fiance, just one month away from marriage, has been found in the rubble of a train accident tragedy. Now, how do you at that time go out thinking, I am here to bat? All your thoughts are clouded, right? Exactly. This is what happened with one young promising fast bowler of New Zealand in the year of 1953. Before I go to my speech, I would like to share you the instance of the 1953 South Africa versus New Zealand series. In where two, it's the tale of two young players. First, who later got on to become a legend in their career, Bert Sutcliffe. Now, at that time, New Zealand had the very fragile batting order and a very fragile team as such. They were not up to the standards of South Africa by any means. Now, at that time, South Africa also had this very young fast bowler called Neil Adcock. Now, his speciality was breaking bones. He wasn't the most accurate fast bowler, but he was the fastest fast bowler of that time. And that is all you needed at that time to succeed because there were no helmets for a batter. So what has happened that Bert Sutcliffe, one of our main protagonists, has got a ball right up to his area, right exactly here. Now he goes to the dressing room to get some stitches. Obviously, at that time, the medical sciences hasn't been that developed. And everyone, including the captain of the team, is saying, mate, just sit out. Anyways, we're not going to win the game. There's no point. Well, he says no. He asks the 12th man to just take some whiskey out of the drum, pour him a glass or two, and he goes out batting absolutely drunk. And he just survives, survives, survives while the other New Zealand batters collapse like a house of cards. And then the ninth wicket falls and obviously he's not expecting the guy who has just lost his fiance to come out to bat. So he starts returning to the pavilion. But out of nowhere, he sees a young, trembling figure coming out of the dark. Well, the man, even with probably the greatest tragedy that life would ever bestow upon anyone, it's still coming out to bat. And at that time, Bert Sutcliffe said a very simple quote to that person. This is no place to die wondering. 
and that is one quote i believe i have always lived my life with i am here for maybe 60 years 70 if i go if i become a bit fitter if i change my lifestyle and the world currently is around 4.3 billion years old i guess so i'm don't think my 60 years is going to impact anything in those 4.3 billion year old world i'm here to just live for a very minuscule time i mean if you were to make a bar graph about the time of what the world has existed and you were to point this much i have existed it would just be a dot you would probably need a microscope to just look at how much i have existed so i feel this is no time for me to die wondering i have to do whatever i can do in just this one single life and that is something i hope everyone understands we are here at a very particular moment of time 100 years from now no one will remember us and 100 years prior no one even had a clue about us i mean no one had a clue about our parents or even grandparents for that matter so what we do today might not impact the world in such a sense as much as it impacts us so i hope everyone when given the choice of doing this for just fun maybe just take a shot at it you want to go take a shot at basketball but you feel you're not good enough doesn't matter what's the worst they're going to do not select you onto the team it happens even when you're applying for a job it happens you can't just hold yourself back just for the fear that i might not get selected on the team you find a girl pretty go tell her you you find a guy pretty go tell them i don't care what orientation you are from as long as you trying to just shoot a shot just go get outside and at the same time if you're in an introvert you don't want to talk to anyone don't it doesn't matter if you talk to every second guy in college or not as long as you're happy do whatever you do just to make yourself happy i know the society has a lot of expectations but that will always be secondary because this is no place to die wondering at the end you don't want to die wondering you don't want to die with regrets you just die want to you just want to die with peace and that is all i have to say back to the tmod toastmaster abiram thank you that is a very wonderful speech toastmaster shivansh you conveyed a deep message and personally me being an introvert i'll definitely hold on to these points and i would i'm i'm really sorry i forgot to uh, give your intro i'll definitely avoid that next time so uh, moving on i would like to call upon the speech evaluator to toastmaster pranav whose intro goes like this he he says he is someone who is too tired to write an intro sorry toastmaster pranav hey i want a quick check am audible great so today i'll be i'll be evaluating someone who's giving a speech after quite a long time the previous vice president of education the current president toastmaster sanadya will be today attempting is l2p1 in the pathway presentation mastery president toastmaster sanadya yeah let me make you a bit nervous before you take the stage and then rightly immediately say stay calm you got this man the stage is all yours back to the toastmaster of the day toastmaster of the day thank you toastmaster pranav okay now i would like to call upon our second speaker toastmaster sanidya whose intro goes like this oh yeah, i i forgot i forgot to mention i am i'm really sorry for coming yeah. back and i forgot sure, sure. the speech is again a very normal speech so timer please know that the time limit is 5 to 7 minutes all right guys back in okay so toastmaster sanidya's intro he is someone who is scared to play cricket because he is afraid that the ball is too hard and will hurt him and his speech title is that's how i do it 
Toast Master Sanidhya. That's how I do it. That's how I do it. Toast Master Sanidhya. A quick AV check. Am I both audible and visible? If I were to ask you all a simple question about what is riskier, say sitting on a couch or going for an extreme sport like skydiving, what will your instinct tell you? Mind me, your instinct. I'm not talking about the crazy minds. What will your instinct tell you? Skydiving? But then it's wrong. All the crazy minds are always right. Sitting on a couch it is. Why? Because a prolonged lazy behavior can definitely have much more threats than the adrenaline rush of leaping off a plane. Let's take another example. What is more unhealthy? A juicy burger or doing drugs? Doing drugs? Nope again. Burger is a winner. Why? Because a diet ridge in fast food has much more health risks than the immediate risk of drug abuse. I mean, you all can think how many obese people you see and how many drug addicts you encounter. Okay, one more, one more. What do you think can kill me? A mosquito or a shark? Obviously, guys, it's a shark. You don't have to think a lot. Just a shark because obviously it's not the same other way around scenario every time. But what is the point of all this? Why am I asking you all these stupid questions that have all varied little answers? The crux of the matter lies in the art of communication. How we present information helps us perceive and influences decisions. The narrative chosen around a topic can change the entire course of action and change the weightage of no matter how compelling thoughts. Indeed, our communication style is a reflection of our personality. Someone portrays confidence through aggressiveness or someone like me prefer a more amicable approach. Now, a person may consider the regular well-defined communication styles, be it passive, where you're not able to express yourself freely and it often leads to suppressed emotion, or be it aggressive, where you explicitly portray your ideas and often lead to defensive behavior, or a mixture of both, passive-aggressive, sometimes underconfidence, sometimes angry, or you can be assertive, where you give honest opinions and take consideration from others. But the fact is, which one to choose and why these categories? Now, let me allow me to explain it through an example from my life. When I enter a classroom, I always see four different kinds of students. One, the teacher's puppets who go to the teacher and be like, ma'am, ma'am, you're the best teacher ever. Oh my God, the way you touch the strings of my heart, the way you give me learnings. Oh, I don't know what I'll do without you. I just love you, ma'am. I mean, that is what Toastmaster Sharanya does. And coming to the second category of students who consider a teacher as the friend, will go to the teacher and be like, ma'am, I really don't understand this topic. I don't want to fail in my exam. Please teach me. Or number three, who are not interested in the classroom. All they're interested in going outside of the classroom, enjoy the school life and be done with it. Or number four, who are very scared to approach the teacher. I mean, there are some students, right? You find in one particular corner of the classroom. They have been in your class for the last two years and you see them for the first time and you'll be like, you are in my class? That category. The fact is, no matter what situation you choose, we always tend to categorize people into groups on the way they communicate. People choose what is comfortable for them and then they take the respective path. I myself aligned with the category of students who had a friendly discussion with the teacher, but that was who I was. Speaking from personal experience, I was someone who was battling with underconfidence in my childhood. I mean, the simple task of getting into a conversation felt like an uphill battle, let alone deciding what communication style to choose. 
I mean, believe me, my biggest fear was going to a shopkeeper and buying something what I want. I mean, that creeped me out. But I realized that if I'm talking to my friends and I'm able to convey my message clearly, why am I not able to talk to other people? I realized if I consider them as a friend and try to be friendly with them, I can easily navigate. Now, it took me years of underconfidence to decide what my communication style was, which was a mix of confidence and an amicable approach. But that was who I was. It was me who decided to be friendly and that is how I do it. Indeed, our communication styles are not mere tools the way we portray messages. They are the building blocks of our personality. The way we choose to express ourselves defines who we really are. A storyteller, a friendly person, this is what I do. But what you do, that is for you to tell. Toastmaster of the day. Wow. We, you have told us how you've grown over the years and we all know you don't need to prove to us that you're a great communicator. So that is a wonderful speech, Toastmaster Sanidya. Okay, so now let's move on in the meeting. Uh, imagine a situation where you're the batter facing a fast bowler. What are the thoughts that are likely to criss uh, crisscross your mind? Anyone? Hello, am I audible? Hello, hello. Yeah, you're audible. Yes, you are. Yes, okay. You are. So anyone? Okay, Can let me repeat tell. the question. Okay. Imagine a situation where you're facing a fast bowler. So what thoughts will be running in your mind? I will think, leave the ball. I want to save my body. I'll move. Yeah, that's typical of uh, Toastmaster Viraj because he's... Okay, never mind. So, the thoughts that we... A real batsman faces will be... He'll try to predict what kind of ball he's going to get. Will it be a Yorker? Will it be a bouncer? Will it be a short ball? Or will it be a slow ball? Next, he'll think about what kind of shot that he should play based on the ball. And he'll also look at the field set. So, or consider in a football game where the opponents are at a high press and you have to instantaneously, and you have the ball and you have to instantaneously choose the right pass. Where, uh, where even if you have the slightest of errors, it can lead to conceding a goal. I'm sure Toastmaster Viraj can understand. So, in these scenarios in both these situations these players they take so many decisions in a matter of split seconds which later prove to be right or wrong so this brings us to the importance of impromptu decision making in sports which is key in the table topic session today therefore i would like to call upon the table topics master toastmaster venkat to proceed with the session and toastmaster venkat's introduction is something like this he says sports make people sports make people have fun and enjoy a friendly competition over to you toastmaster venkat good evening everyone am i audible uh, our meeting theme is about sports this I mean, uh, everybody likes sports, but some of them don't like sports. I don't know why. Uh, but in my opinion, the sports gives us uh, mentally and physically a good experience and how to control our emotions and about teamwork, how to be with uh, our teammates and uh, how to behave with them and etc. And it gives us joy and victory and defeat. You know why? 
uh, victory it gives us a lesson to move on in the life uh, and to achieve something in our life and defeat teaches us uh, a lesson like uh, i mean uh, on wa- what to uh, make things to achieve our goals in our life these two our uh, are our important lessons in our life so i think sports is a very valuable uh, very valuable part in our life so as a table topic master for this meeting i have a, a prepared a series of questions that will encourage you to share your experiences and your opinions etc so who's going to volunteer first anybody yeah tm holding okay i'll give you some option can you choose it yeah sure yeah uh i'll give you three options you can choose one first one is lord hanuman ashwadhama and parashurama i'll choose the first option lord hanuman so okay uh how can team work in sports be applied in other areas of life okay uh, that's a that's what sports teaches us especially team sports like football uh in a football we ha- the main thing is to understand your teammates how you work with your teammates how well you perform with them how you understand their game and you play uh so that you complement their game and your your game as well so that's what these team games teaches you it teaches you camaraderie it teaches you how you how you can work with others and these kind of skills they're not only useful here but they can be used in any all walks of life that's it over to the uh, toastmaster venkat yeah um, okay uh, next one next who is going to volunteer nobody can i pick one okay uh choose three options uh, in three options you can choose one mahabali vedavyasa and vibhishana మహాబలి వేదవ్యాస అండ్ విభీషణ the third one okay vibhishana okay imagine you are coaching a youth sports team what would be your first lesson to teach your players and why or to sri lalita close master sri lalita uh okay i get 30 seconds to like think right yes yes Okay so if i was coaching a youth sports team which i probably wouldn't be doing i shouldn't be doing because i don't play any sports like you know those people in your school who will uh, during games period and all you go uh, uh, like everyone else you all just go you play and then there's like that one group of like three or four people who will go to the tt room pretend that they're going to play tt sit and gossip instead that's me so i should not be coaching any youth sports team except if the sport in question is chess because that's the only sport i have played so if i was coaching a youth chess team my first lesson would probably be uh, for them to learn how to control their emotions 
because uh, I think this applies for any sport, any other sport as well. The one thing that can absolutely ruin your game is if your opponent gets you riled up, they get you angry or they get you to feel some other emotion and that ruins your form. It ruins the way you think about the game normally. And this happened to me a lot when I was playing chess. Um, I would play a friendly match with the opponent before, which is kind of custom for a lot of people. Um, uh, we just do it to get to know what the opponent's style is, how they think and how they play. So I would play a friendly match. And if that person played really well, I would immediately get demoralized. Or if they were someone who said something about me or my coach before, uh, the match, I would immediately be angry and this would reflect very poorly upon my game. So if I were to coach a youth team, the first lesson that I would teach them would be to not let their emotions affect their game. Thank you. Over to the uh, TTM. That was a wonderful speech and who's going to next volunteer? Am I audible? Nobody wants to. Okay, share I do. You know topic. Uh, choose three options. Choose one option in there. Ashwadhamma, Parashurama, and Krupacharya. Okay, Ashwatthama. Okay, uh, the question is, if you are an athlete attending a sports event in the school or college or university, which would it be and why? What will what the message will give to the students? Okay, if I am ever being an athlete, which is something which all of you who know me say, uh, will clearly know that is something which is not me. And the only thing which will be real close to what I as an athlete can do will be swimming. Because that is something which I am pretty good at, per se. But then not competitively good at, something which I enjoy. So that will be the field which I will be personally taking. But then, again, uh, what, will I, what will I tell people from swimming? Well, Technically, it's something which is going to be a very relaxing and very calming way. Just float yourself in the water and see what happens. Worst case, first you drown and we get rid of some pounds on the earth. And you, when we meet you in heaven, what happens is the worst. You guys learn to swim. And come a pandemic, you guys will be able to survive with just the pool. That being said, that's my time. Yeah, uh, thank you to Toastmaster Pranav. And who is going to next to volunteer? Hello. Hi. Uh, uh, just tell me are... good enough so that I can speak, or else it will be no point. There will be no point. Sorry, I'm not. My... Am I audible, first of all? Yeah, yeah, now you are already. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'm giving the options Parushurama, uh, Krupacharya, and Mahabali. Mahabali. Okay. So you are playing a serious cricket match in the ground. The senior, uh, I mean, uh, seniors in the college, the seniors will come and clear the uh, ground for them to play. How will you handle that situation and convince the seniors to play? To play with you or you guys, uh, juniors will play? Okay, quite relatable one. Give me 30 seconds. Yeah, sure.
talking about seniors seniors are the ones who always dominate the juniors that has been from centuries and it will go on no matter what because seniors they make groups they confined to their group and juniors don't have their group so and they know about what seniors have done so it is quite difficult to convince a senior to tell them what you want to do and if you are playing in a uh, we are playing a cricket match in between so one senior comes first of all we'll listen to him we'll uh, uh, i'll listen to him i'll see if that senior is good enough to talk to first of all if not then i'll just leave the place if he is good enough which in, which is in most of the cases it is not then i'll try to convince uh, that uh, can we at least play together or else can we just wait for some time so that we can finish our match and uh, we'll do but that is a theoretical part in reality what i'll do okay sir i'll leave and that's all i'll do thank you thank you toast master who is going to like next volunteer yeah um dosh ma sitapan yeah i'm giving the options parushurama vedavyasa and krupacharya first option parushurama okay okay if you could create a new sports combining elements of the existing one sports what would it be and how it will how it would be played give me first Thirty seconds for a yeah short sure. time. So okay, now there are many many fusions in in the sports also like beach volleyball, or else on American football. Um, American football is mostly the combination of football and rugby. so if i could fuse one game like that then it would be like kabaddi and rugby because both of them have ag aggressive nature means both the games are somewhat aggressive not the these two games are not gentleman sports right whether it is in kabaddi or rugby most of the time the players try to attack the opponent by either pulling him down all these kinds of things we cannot see in the other sports so elements like ankle touch all these kinds of things will be in kabaddi so this can be included in rugby also so and i don't know what it is called double tie hold all these kinds of things will be there this can be implemented in rugby also so if at all i have a chance then i will try to fuse kabaddi and rugby thank you Thank you, Dosma Sutapan. Uh, thank you, everyone. You, everybody spoke well. Thank you for sharing your experiences and opinions. Over to DM Modi. Uh, thank you, Dosma Sutapan, for that engaging table topic session. Uh, I forgot that it was a table topic session. I just focused on answering the question, and when I saw the green card, I realized I made a mistake. so i'll take care of it the next time so since we've reached the half time of this meeting uh i would like to ask the timer do we have time for a 5 minute break yes we do thank you Okay let's start the 5 minute break yet yeah. We can start Okay so i welcome you all back to our second half of the meeting Okay now let me tell you a short story I still remember I used to go for tennis coaching when i was small uh initially uh my coach identified that my stance of forehand and backhand were incorrect 
so he evaluated that the same could be corrected with shadow and wall practice about 100 repetitions before i was allowed to enter the court so uh, wall practice basically there's a wall and you keep rallying with the wall so you keep hitting the ball towards the wall it comes back you hit it and so on wall uh, shadow practice is where you mimic the action of the forehand and backhand without any interaction with the ball so i used to do that hundreds of times before i stepped into the court and that's what perfected my stance of forehand and backhand so after several such evaluations and correcting my posture and stance perfectly and making making it perfect i went on to win numerous tournaments at uh, at that age and in the future as well so similarly i am confident that our worthy evaluators with their able evaluations will definitely help and assist our speakers in the best way possible so with this i now call upon the general evaluator toastmaster harsha hey everyone i am harsha a general evaluator and now let's get on with the evaluation segment first off i would like to invite toastmaster sharanya who will uh, evaluate toastmaster shivansh thank you so much general evaluator so toastmaster shivansh's uh, project was to inspire us and i think he definitely cleared the objectives because i personally felt inspired that by the story that he shared i think that is a very good way to uh, approach an elective and especially one such that is for ins- inspiring the others is using a story that already exists so i think that really captured the attention of the audience so very well done with that then the basis of the whole speech revolved around one quote that was this n- this is no place to die wondering and i think that is something a lot of us can carry forward into our lives because it was truly inspiring to see how you could encourage us depending on that one quote from the story that you shared i really like the division that you have employed while giving your speech first was entirely a story an existing one a true one and then the lesson that you received from it that's a good way to approach it then you spent a good amount of time uh, convincing everyone in the meeting that they should go and give something that they're scared of a shot and that was very well done and that was the entire purpose of your speech a few pointers and improvements that i could say is you could consider ordering the speech a little better where you went from talking about the batter story to then shifting upon this uh, match starting so if you could order that better and maybe shift the order that would be a nice second is that the language usage could be a little bit more clearer in the sense when you wanted to tell that the ball came and hit the batter's neck i wasn't able to tell exactly whether it hit or just grazed through or was was it not hurting him so if you could just clearly say that the batter was injured by the ball that would be a point and then one thing what you did was you emphasized a lot on the existing of a person i do understand you did that because you wanted to emphasize on our existence and the fact that we have to make something out of it and give make a purpose out of it but the existing the time that you took to explain our existence was a little uh, out of topic from what your objectives were trying to convey lastly uh, though this was an amazing speech next time to level up a little more i have a challenge uh, if you could use adjectives to ta- share more deeply about how the batter what do you think went through the batter's head after he went to bat and there was such a tragic incident that had taken place his mental status and how he psyched himself up to give a good performance if you could share that and from your perspective of how you thought the batter would have thought that would be a challenge wonderful speech i think you really succeeded in, in inspiring all of us and we'll take the tips that you have said forward back to the general evaluator
Thank you, Toastmaster Sharanya. Next up, I would like to call Toastmaster Pranav to evaluate Toastmaster Saradhya. Please give me just a minute. Hello everyone, a quick check, I'm both audible and visible. All right, great, I'm really sorry for taking your time. Coming back to the speech I just heard from Toastmaster Sanajan. That's how I do it. Well, a really inspiring speech title for a speech objective, which is to communicate your communication style. But then, hey everyone, today I'll be evaluating Toastmaster Sanajan. And I'm speaking in the passive communication style. Guys, I'll be today evaluating Toastmaster Sanadhyaya. And I want you all to hear to me. Yeah, aggressive speaking style. You guys get where I'm coming at? Communication. Clarity. Instead of reading an essay, you can enunciate things. So that your audience gets to understand. And gets to incorporate ideas. So that's the first point of thing, first challenge which you can incorporate, Sanadhyaya, which is voice modulation. Second, something which I want to say. What do you guys feel is better? A burger or drug use? Or a dose of drug? Well, the question is again ambiguous. Because a burger is always better than a single usage of drug. No. Yes. Again. Clarity. But now, let me come. Let me come to something. The third point of improvement which I can give. It might feel as if I'm some variating, but then, when you start the speech with the title, when the team out gives you off with the title, that's how I do it. And then we hear examples of A or B. What do we end up doing? We get detached from the title. A title which is so powerful and so apt for the project. But now, coming again, the points which you have greatly excelled at. One, that is understanding the project. Because honestly, I've heard many people give this speech before, including myself, and none of us covered all the bases. We just focused on what is majorly ours and touched upon the other styles of communication. But you, Postmaster Sanadhyam, you went into the efforts and the nuances of understanding each and every type of speech and giving us a great idea of what it is and helping us understand what our speech style could be. Now, the second thing which you have done is taking aspects of your own life, showing how you have changed, who you were and who you are today. I believe all of us have at some point never, would have had a fear of doing something or the other. For you today, we all got to know that it was to go and meet a shopkeeper and ask for things or negotiate. Right? And you have showed how your communication style has evolved to get better at it. Which is, again, a great thing. Taking your own personal example for us to realize what we have done. The third and final thing which I want you want to appreciate you for. That is a clear clarity of what your style of communication is. Because most of us at this stage when we are giving this project are not very aware of what our style of communication is at all. We just try to figure it out and try to approximate it. But you have understood what yours is 
and kudos to you at that with all that being said you have greatly excelled at meeting the objectives of the speech but then the sanadhya of old which i remember is a bit rusty the voice modulation is a bit off the stage usage not that great probably because it's a virtual one so here's to your speech after a long time and here's to a lot more speeches from you with the gusto of sanadhya the speaker back to the general evaluator Thank you, Toastmaster Pranav. Next up, I would like to call my tag team, and I will start off with the grammarian, Toastmaster uh, Tapan. Hello, everyone. So I am back with my report. Sadly, today no one used word of the day and used idiom of the day. I hope I am clear enough in explaining you them. Am I clear in making you to understand this? So, apart from this, Shivans and Sanidia used few words which are really appreciable. They are, you know, coming to Shivans. Shivans used the word trembling figure, which means someone who is shocked or tremored. He used it to explain the state of the batsman while he is coming to bat. And also, he used a idiomatic expression called, This is no place. No place to die wandering, which means it is not a good idea to leave things unexplored or unanswered. Coming to Sanidia, he used the word crux of the matter. Crux of the matter means most important part of the speech, which may affect which may affect everything else. And also one more word he used is an amicable approach, which means a friendly approach. So apart from this, no one used to word of the day, idiom of the day. So I am concluding my report. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Tapan. I would now like to call upon Toastmaster Sri Lalita to give the encounters report. Um, quick audio and video check, guys. Am I audible and visible? Cool. So, um, I, um, if, okay, so I'm gonna start with uh, the prepared speeches. Toastmaster Sanidya, you had, uh, you had used one arm and you had used two ants. Um, Toastmaster uh, Shivansh, you had used three short pauses. If your total number of CRPFs is less than three, I will just not be mentioning uh, anything. Um, then coming to the uh, TTM, Toastmaster Venkat, you had five hours, one arm, one butt, five ants, and one long pause. A long pause is any pause that is longer than one second. Um, Toastmaster Abhiram, in your uh, table topic speech, you used uh, one hour, one butt, and one repeat. Um, Myself in my table topic speech, I think I had used two hours, uh, two likes, and one repeat. Uh, Toastmaster Pranav, you used um, two hours and one but. Uh, Toastmaster Viraj used three hours, one repeat, and one and. Toastmaster Tapan, you used four so's and two likes. Uh, coming to the evaluators, Toastmaster Sharanya, perfect. Uh, no CRPFs, so also Toastmaster Pranav. Uh, Toastmaster uh, Abhiram, as the TMOD, you had used seven hours, two arms, and four sows, and also four pauses, four short pauses, and uh, two ants. That's it for my report. Over to the general evaluator. Thank you, Toastmaster Sri Lalita. Now, uh, I would like to call upon Toastmaster Brahma Ganesh to give the timers report. Thank 
Hello, am I audible? Okay. So, yes, today's uh, session was quite fun to time because there's not many people who've crossed the limit or even reached the limit barely. So uh, I literally had not much work to do except for noting down the time. Well, coming to the prepared speeches segment, uh, Toastmaster Shivans uh, was just on the border. Uh, let's just say we've put him in the no man's land. Hence, he's safe exactly at six minutes and 30 seconds. Please be aware of the time. And Toastmaster Sanidya, well within time. That is five minutes, 51 seconds time. And coming to the table topic speakers, a lot of uh us have not even reached the green card time so telling the times uh, that is toastmaster abiram 42 seconds toastmaster sri lalita 1 minute 56 seconds very good uh toastmaster prano 55 seconds toastmaster viraj 58 seconds and toastmaster tapan 1 minute 5 seconds again good time and uh, now with the speech evaluations Toastmaster Sharanya has taken 3 minutes 5 seconds and Toastmaster Pranav has taken 3 minutes 35 seconds. And with the tag team evaluation, Toastmaster Tapan has taken 3 minutes exactly and Toastmaster Sri Lalita has taken 2 minutes 50 seconds and I would tell my time in, in the end, of course. Let's focus on keeping a track of the time. Some of you have rushed through your table topics and some of you have dragged your speeches until the very last second. So let's hope we maintain the time between or in the duration of the green flag, uh, green card time, being a green flag. Uh, well, let's go. So that's with the timers report and my time is two minutes, 58 seconds dot. Thank you. That's all for today. Thank you, to Toastmaster. Thank you, Toastmaster Ganesh. Now coming to my evaluation. Uh, starting off with the prepared speeches, um, Toastmaster Shivansh, I think one thing that I really liked about your speech was the way you modulated your voice. I mean, you your speech purpose was to inspire people, and I think you did just that. And I could really sense the feeling that you're speaking from your heart so which was really really good one improvement from my end is that usually when someone is delivering their speech it is advised to stand up and then deliver the speech if you can take care of that in your upcoming speeches that would be great now coming to toastmaster sharanya uh you gave a very detailed evaluation you stated his speech objectives in the beginning and you used the sandwich theorem where you first told his uh good usages and uh, his plus points and then you focused on his improvements which was great you also spoke about the challenges so which was also very good now coming to toastmaster sanidya the second speaker i think i really liked your speech uh, the way you opened up you really instilled a sense of curiosity in all of our minds and that just got us hooked to your speech which was really good and one thing that i would like to emphasize was I think even your evaluator emphasized is to improve on your body language and coming to Toastmaster Pranav I think you were very energetic you just uh, you know lifted up the mood so great job and you also enacted what you wanted uh, Toastmaster uh, Sanadya to improvise so which was also very good so and the evaluation was also very detailed so great job on that now coming to the big four. So starting off with uh, Toastmaster Abiram, the TMOD. Uh, I think you, I think this was the first time you took up TMOD, but it didn't feel like it. You sounded very confident. It was a very smooth session. And maybe that's also because you took up your favorite topic, sports. And I could really feel that confidence. I think that's what made you feel very confident and great job with that one thing you can improvise on is um you you stated it saying that you uh, you forgot to uh give someone's intro in the beginning but that's all right try to take care from next time 
uh coming to the table topic speaker toastmaster uh venkat and uh, table topic master sorry uh, a, a very interesting take on uh, the table topic session i really loved how you connected mahabharata and ramayana characters to sports so yeah that was very unique and i really liked it uh one um, uh, point of improvement from my end is uh when you're picking up people try to call out their name and then give them the uh, table topic that way um, there's no confusion on who has to speak so yeah that is one thing you can improvise on but otherwise great job um coming to sa mansi she started off the meeting on a very enthusiastic note yes she forgot to mention one of the uh, golden rules but that's all right she re uh, she reiterated in the end and now coming to my tag team uh toastmaster uh tapan the grammarian for today i know uh, all of us forgot to use the idiom of the day and the word of the day and you reiterated that but yeah you were you explained the meaning and everything so it was it was just taught right on our part to not use it we'll take care next time guys please take care next time and you also explain the good usages and you also explain their meanings so that was something which was very new not many people do it but it was very good that you stated the meanings of the good usages that people used and uh, one thing you can improve on is to highlight any uh, incorrect usages that uh, was used in the meeting and you can also state how uh, improvements can be made how people can improve their grammatical usages in the future so that is about it uh toastmaster shri lalita again you gave a very detailed report so great job on that uh one thing i would like to say is uh usually uh, we try to avoid evaluating the tag usually avoids evaluating the big four because it's usually all impromptu speaking that happens so crutch words are crutch words and yapiers are very uh, likely to occur so we usually don't evaluate the big four so try to avoid it from next time and toastmaster brahma ganesh the timer you uh, were very punctual and you were very careful in uh, showcasing the timer cards great job uh, one thing that i would like to tell is in the beginning uh, i think if you had shown the red card green card and yellow card it would have been really good because a lot of people might not be familiar to this format uh, before this so it would have been great if you had shown those timer cards and explained uh, how much time each segment takes etc yeah so that is just one thing that i would like to say and now coming to the overall flow of the meetings yeah uh, one more thing i forgot was the table topic speakers you all you guys also did an amazing job just one thing that i would like to reiterate is the fact that i know that this is an online setting um but it would be great if all of you came up on camera and then spoke it would have just been a lot more better so that's one thing i wanted to tell now coming to the overall flow of the meeting i think uh, the meeting started on time there was a 5 10 minutes delay but that was okay but um, we started on time and the overall meeting flow was also very smooth and uh, one thing that i would like to say is courage the speakers who is talking i know it's not that easy in an online setting but you can uh, just give a reaction that would be really good because all the speakers put in a lot of effort in preparing uh, for their uh, part today so it would be really nice if you could give them a lot of encouragement that would mean everything to them so yeah that is about it from my end thank you so much and over to the dm only thank you general evaluator okay now as we move to the last stage of the meeting i'll start my conclusion so from all this we learn that sports is an emotion and it can bind even the adversaries together and not only this it teaches us a lot of qualities vital qualities attributes such as discipline hard work tenacity perseverance and humility so since all of since it's a most recent event in sports 
and the uh, most cherishable one in the new uh, recent times i'll i like to go back a few days to the final of the t20 world cup so here we could see all the uh, mentioned attributes being practically displayed by each and every one of our players the team showed immense camaraderie grit and determination under the leadership of rohit sharma to achieve a victory that we've been craving for 13 years so sport it not only teaches us all these quality it teaches us to respect it re- teaches us to respect the opposition so that we don't make any below the belt moves so finally i'm sanguine that we will draw adequate cues from all that we discussed in our topics from all the segments and utilize it to excel in our fields of interest thank you back to the presiding officer toastmaster sanidhya thank you toastmaster abiram after such a wonderful meeting that you conducted for us today uh, i mean i really enjoyed today's meeting and especially the first meeting for the 15th executive committee so congratulations on all the 15th executive committee members for conducting your first meeting officially so yeah claps claps now uh, harsha do we have the voting form ready is it out no uh, just out. just give me 2 minutes sure by the time harsha is rolling out the forms uh a few things i like to say first i'll reiterate the initial announcements that were installation ceremony on 10th and varsity jacket form closes tonight other than that uh, there's one more announcement it's not an announcement as such but then i would like you all to know that we all are planning an open house for the upcoming batch of students which will be done during the induction process of the upcoming batch uh, i would love to see all of you as audience for that open house we will be having a guest speaker uh, we cannot reveal the guest speaker as of now but then yeah you guys can be excited about it uh, so yeah that is that other than that if anyone else wants to come up onto the stage and say something about what they want to see or what they have been feeling in the club the stage is open hey everyone uh first of all it's great to get on a meet after a little tiring internship driving back home among the few good things you want to hear is people speaking and people who you know speaking and putting on putting out speeches music can be better but arjit singh gets tiring what can i say But then, great job, the 15th XCOM, for coming for conducting your first meet online as it is, and looking forward to many more uh, accolades for the club and cheers, cherish, grow on, have fun, everyone. I hope everyone's having a fun vacation. Thank you, Toast Master Pranav. I do believe everyone is having a fun vacation, other than me, because. <laughs> i'm just <laughs> traveling every day going back, traveling going to work and coming yeah right and uh, I, I rushing I back to home <laughs> right uh, uh, okay yeah, i seriously don't think uh, traveling yeah. is an issue because everyone who is in third year right now is crying and weeping thinking holidays are not enough and here we are in the meeting seeing the second year kids saying bro we want this college back on track i'm i i barely got a day holiday come on please. i agree i agree uh, <laughs> i couldn't agree more where yeah, is aman bumbugari it's actually so Pretty hectic fast. traveling every day for internship you'll get to know you'll get to know you you're going to be in third year you'll get to know <laughs> you guys will get to know all the ai chaps work from home is no longer there last last time i had that Right now it's three days in office and two days of what do you call work from home. And if you are facing a cli- like if you take a client centric role, Bobby Swa. So don't talk about long- centric. Don't scare me now. I have one year. No. 
okay guys okay we can have the discussion after the meeting uh by yes. the time the form Next comes out you have plan it out accordingly right uh just one more thing i want to add uh, all of you who are interested in joining the pr team do reach out to toastmaster harsha our brand new vp pr right there and i mean i would like you all to just give it a try try making a poster or writing a caption it is actually a good experience i have like i did my first pr work when nikhilesh was the vp pr and it is a good experience so i would love you all to just give it a try and join the pr team help our vp pr and let's go with it harsha do we have the form okay we don't have the form yet yes we do have the forms i request everyone to go and drop in your votes How many responses do we have, Toastmaster Arsha? Five responses. Eight. Okay, you can send me the results. I believe everyone has voted.
तो समझता है शायद यू सेंडिंग द रिजल्ट्स आई स्टिल डोंट हाँ वन सेक Toastmaster Daksh, do you want to say something? I actually have a few things to say, but I'll save it for the end of the meeting. Okay, you can do that when we do the launch of. Yeah, just to tell everyone, Toastmaster Daksh completed his LDP and he is an he is an LDP graduate now. So congratulations for that. And I think I have the results. Yes. Okay. So the best of tag team. Any guesses? Okay, we cannot have the drum rolls in the online setup. That's sad. Was I muted? Yeah, Toastmaster Brahma Ganesh, best of tag team. Damn, didn't expect that. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, next up, best of table topic speakers. Any guesses? Ah, uh, no one will guess now. Who will mute? Unmute and give the guess. The best of table topic speakers goes to Toastmaster Sri Lalita. Congratulations. Then we have the best of speech evaluators, and the best of speech evaluators goes to Toastmaster Sharanya. Congratulations. The best of Big Four. Okay, now there would have been a tough competition for that. Any guesses for the best of Big Four? The best oh, of Big them, Four. Everyone. <laughs> the best of big four goes to a dear TMOD Toastmaster Abhiram, and finally the best of speakers that goes to Toastmaster Sanidya. That is me. Thank you very much. So with this, we come towards the end of this meeting. Uh, so I officially. I'll officially close this meeting. So, I declare meeting number two fifty one, themed sports, closed. The session is now open for networking. But before that, if anyone wants to say something for a launch off, you are most welcome. I think Toastmaster Daksh wanted to say something. You can go ahead and do that. Hey, good evening, guys. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Okay, great. So first of all, congrats for 15th Exform for the very first meeting. There's a lot to go. Uh, I don't want to take too much time. I want to quickly wrap up a few things I want to talk about. Hopefully, I think all the okay, the role takers are not here. Few of them left, but that's fine. Most of them are here. So I want to just give a small feedback about this first meeting that we had. Uh, this feedback is mostly going to be for the role takers itself. And about the general flow of the meeting. Firstly, I want to talk about the speakers and the speech evaluators. I want to say that since you all of you guys were actually seasonal members of the club and like Toastmasters in general, I don't really have any feedback for you guys. You guys did a really good job. So this feedback is mostly for the newer members and some people who have taken up the role for the first time. I want to start with the TMOD Toastmaster Aviram. I think this is the first time you have taken the TMOD, right? I have to say you have done a really good job. It was like excellent, and I have to say that you know you didn't miss out any points. You have done the role of a TMOD really, really, really well. Many times TMOD, what they do is they just come, they say that okay, so now it's time for the speeches, now it's time for the table topics, now it's time for the evaluation. You actually had a script with you, and you stuck to the script. You did a really good job, and most importantly, something that even seasonal, you know, a T TMOD forget is that you didn't forget to mention Ralph Seath Medley. For your first TMOD role, remembering each and everything, remembering the structure, remembering the script, everything, you have done a really great job. I really look forward to seeing you in tab. 
Next up, we have uh, Harsha, Toastmaster Harsha, you're here, right? Okay, so Toastmaster Harsha, I have like a very special evaluation for you because this is the second time I'm actually listening to you speak. This is a very sad thing for me to say as a Toastmaster, I've been very inactive, but I was there during your icebreaker and I have actually heard multiple icebreakers, right? I have been in Toastmaster for a quite some time now and I've heard many icebreakers within the club, outside the club. And now I'm seeing a bunch of those people that like, you know, I saw the icebreakers, I heard the icebreakers, I evaluated the icebreakers and I've seen they have come quite far. You of all people, I have to say you have really impressed me so much as the general evaluator. I think I have seen the biggest improvement. This could be because I'm hearing you like the second time after your icebreaker could be because of that. But it really, really, really didn't feel like you were someone who's new to the club. You gave me the vibes of tab when I joined and I have to say like since I joined many of our seniors have left and you know tab has become a very new place a very fun type of place you made sure that tab was a fun place but it also had the strictness and like you know the evaluation segment is supposed to be strict for all the speakers for anyone who comes to the stage and you maintain that strictness you know you didn't let it be like some sort of a joke of a session. You really stuck to the general evaluator script and, you know, you really reminded me of my seniors. Some people that, you know, I was really afraid of when they were a general evaluator. So I have to say you've done a really, really, really good job as a general evaluator. So much progress you have made. Now, finally, one small thing I want to mention. Uh, this is just a general thing I want to mention regarding table topic sessions. This is for the table topic speakers who spoke today, and I'm sure that everybody already knows this, but once the table topic master gives you your topic, are you supposed to speak immediately or do you have a 30 second buffer time? So this is a question for everyone. They have a buffer time, but they are not supposed to ask for the buffer time. Yes, they can just exactly. straight away take it. And if you speak, the timer starts. Yeah, so this is something I want to iterate and this is something that future table topic masters can take into account when you are introducing your role. Make sure that you mention that speakers are allowed to take a 30 second buffer time. As it's your right. You don't have to ask for it. It is your right to take a 30 second buffer time. And please make sure that the timer starts the very first time you make any form of communication with the audience. It can be a verbal or non-verbal communication. And unfortunately, asking for the buffer time, saying, can I please take the 30 second buffer time will count as a form of communication. So all the people, all the table topic speakers who spoke today, uh, you guys were seasonal members of the club and I see you guys as people who would be attending a lot of contests. So obviously in a club meeting, it's not really going to matter. You know, it doesn't matter whether you uh, ask for the buffer time and all that kind of stuff. But when you're attending contests, this is something which is looked at very, very strictly. And uh, I or see all of you guys as potential winners to like any contest tab attends because we have that quality in us. So I request all the table topic uh, speakers who spoke today, please keep that in mind. And future table topic masters can iterate this fact that the timing will start immediately. The moment you even look at the audience, you like, you know, you you, you make a you smile at them or you do any form of gesture. That is a form of non-verbal communication. The timer will start immediately. If you're taking the 30 second buffer time, you can just quietly stand there. You don't have to look at the ground. You can look at the you can look at the speaker. I mean, so you, you can look at the audience. You can look at people, you can think, but make sure that you don't establish any form of connection because that will immediately start your timer. And finally, one last thing I want to mention is uh, this is just a small thing. It's not really a big thing, but uh, where was the voting form shared, by the way? Oh, exactly. Take yeah. So in case there are some guests in the meeting, just make sure that it's shared in the group, it's in the chat. And this is something that I actually mentioned in the chat also that the link is not here, but OK, that's fine. So I know online meetings are very painful to conduct, not something that uh, be many people would like to attend, myself included. I don't really like attending online meetings, but for the first meeting. One second. Yeah, so for the first meeting, I would like to say that, you know, 15th XCOM, you guys have done really well. I can see a lot of potential here, especially among the newer members. Like I said, Toastmaster Aviram, Toastmaster Harsha, and even uh, Toastmaster Venkat. He's probably not here. Oh, oh wait, he's here. Sai Charit, sorry. What do I call you? I think Toastmaster Sai Charit, right? I'll go with Sai Charit. Call me Venkat. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I can call you that. So I see a lot of potential, like really a lot of potential in Tab right now. And I'm really, really happy to see that. 
and I'm also happy to see some older members becoming more and more active. So we, I really hope we can keep this momentum going and I'll try to attend more meetings in the future. But I should not promise anything because I'm a little busy with fourth year. But yeah, congratulations everyone. Congratulations to Techcom. All the best to you guys. Thank you, Dostmaster Daksh. Those were some great valuable inputs. I, I mean, just thank you very much. And I think we all should note down whatever he mentioned and work on that. For now, I the meeting has already been closed. So you guys can talk or do whatever you want. We can stop the recording, Toastmaster Sharanya. And just a second. We can stop the recording, Toastmaster Sharanya. <laughs>